guys. Well, as we start this game up, uh, another big map in the upper right corner. We have our blue Terran Massa. And then in the bottom left corner, we've got our red Protoss being played by Huck. And as things start up, we've got a pylon being built in behind the mineral field. Uh, we've got a supply depot being built behind the mineral field. The placement, again, um, you mentioned in the last game, is just kind of a novelty. It's one of those things It's like, yeah, you can build it practically anywhere in a matchup like this. But uh, why would you build it behind the mineral fields, typically? Uh, he could use it to block things getting in and out. Like if a, sometimes a zealot will try and stick itself between these. It's not, again, that likely in a PVT. So this one, again, is more just that's kind of where you put it. However, on Huck side of things, again, this can actually be used to help kind of rustle in a Reaper if it tries to go around. If you make a wall there, okay. then it's harder. So Protoss does often like to clutter up the back to make it harder for a Reaper, harder for drops, things like that. The added uh, benefit that I just yeah. thought of as well is that it also allows for later on placement of photon cannons yeah, if he exactly. suspects that that's yeah, a thing right that he needs. Yeah, right there in the middle because that will be in the range. So, yeah, it's a it makes it a very efficient uh, place to do it. Kind of reminds me of the uh, Undead from Warcraft 3 placing like a ziggurat back yeah. there with a frozen drip. But that's a different game from a different <laughs> time, uh, like a decade ago. Anyway, we've got the barracks being built up here by Massa. Do you think he's going to go for that Reaper again? Or do you think that he, in a big map like this, maybe he'll decide to do I what he did in the first the game? The gas timing aligns with it, but yeah, okay, he, he is. Yep. Yeah, you can usually tell, although he did in the first game too, he had 50 gas right when the barracks finished and he didn't make one. Yeah. So uh, you can usually tell by the timing of the gas what the Terran's going to do, but uh, he deviated from that originally. Yeah, uh -huh. that, uh, that deviation, I think, yeah. uh, ended up being useful because they yeah. surprised the Mothership core. And, uh, yeah, and here's kind of, again, that construction of the wall to catch a Reaper over behind uh, Huck space. And uh, the Reaper is uh, almost done. It is now finished being built. Where is it going to go? It seems like it's running across the map. So this time, oh, wait, uh, no, nope, never going. mind. It's going off to the left. So, again, the Reaper going to be a great scouting unit, but it's not going to be all that useful for offense. Uh, as the Mothership Corps coming out uh, on time to be able to defend against anything that's going, hey, you know what, I'm going to get rid of those probes. Yeah, now Huck, uh, this time around, he's putting a pylon in his main base that's kind of really off to the side. Why would one do that? So one would do that because he wants, when Massa comes in, if he gets a look around the base, he wants to see that there's only two pylons potentially not see this one, and then think there must be a third <laughs> pylon somewhere else on the map you're proxying again. Now so that's he wants sneaky. him to come to that conclusion, but uh, unfortunately he won't even get in there. Well, maybe fortunately or unfortunately, he won't get in <laughs> to really see that, but that's just one of those like little things. It will also, because it's over there, it spots for drops later, it, so it serves multiple, uh, multiple useful purposes, but even just causing that like momentary, oh, something's missing. Yeah, uh, feeling can cause someone to do the wrong thing. And in this case, uh, that is ca causing Massa to just build more Marines right out of the gate. Uh, and a st going into the starports. You know, the usual, really. Yeah. Uh, on the Protoss side, Huck is building a Stargate. Now, why build a Stargate? Uh, st on a big map like this, to me it is a little bit less effective, but Oracles still are really good. Uh, yeah. So if you could get into a mineral line, that's still something that is very valuable. Uh, and it looks like with this proxy pylon up, maybe he's looking to do that as part of an aggression. Um, there is a build wherein you make oracles, but if they're not meant to harass the mineral line, they're meant to focus down troops at the front or the bunkers at the front, or oh. along with the rest of your army. So that's a potential thing, given that he's also placed a forward pylon. But uh, we'll see. He's actually getting a Phoenix. Oh, the, so, another potential yeah. thing is that Reaper going to bite it. Yeah. Uh, it's very low HP. It's going to finally see the Stargate. So, uh, you know, welcome. Uh, enjoy the Stargate. I hope you enjoy the Stargate program here in Hub Space. Uh, they're going to start going ahead and plonking out these probes. Uh, as they start to run away, he finally gets one of them uh, with that Reaper at least. Uh, and the sentry's going to come in, it's going to start dealing some damage, it's going to finally end up killing the Reaper. But the Reaper, having scouted some really yeah. important tech. Uh, it, exactly, and he, Huck was actually trying to hide, like as soon as he made, uh, yeah, I knew he was going to do that. He made the Phoenix and then he ran it off to the side and started an Oracle. 
Okay. Because an oracle's more normal. Okay. But now he's then he as soon as he couldn't see anymore, he canceled the oracle and made another phoenix. So why build a phoenix over an oracle? Because we talked about how the oracle might not yeah. be the best move in this case, and now he's got phoenixes just doing their dance. Um, Largely for this, which is oh, phoenix are just crazy anti-drop uh, control, as they'll be able to catch this. Mm -hmm. And later on into the game, if they go into Colossus, uh -oh. they're just deadly. So he will likely catch this drop here. Oh, it won't be enough to stop yeah. it, though. In come the Widow Mines. You can pick it up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's too bad. Before okay. Yeah. So the Phoenix uh, proving to be far more versatile than I initially had thought. A yeah. uh, really good micro uh, on Huck's takes, part. Yeah, that takes some micro to pick it up, uh, especially in your own mineral line, where you might click on the wrong thing. but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a very useful quality for them as well. So it's really good at shutting all of this down. And I don't know how the hell this... <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know how the hell that got in there, but there is a probe in the base. And, and it's going to build a pylon. I legitimately don't know how it got in there. Well, it's going to get scattered out yeah. by a widow mine right now, and yeah. I have a feeling that that will no longer be the case for very yeah. long. Uh, down goes the probe. The, uh, pro uh, the pylon itself is going to take enough damage that... It's not going to end up doing anything. On the flip side, however, those Marines are going to be dealing with that pylon while these Stalkers start doing some damage to the expansion. They're going to take out one SCV, two SCVs. Uh, this third SCV, there it goes. Stalker goes down, but for the amount of SCVs that they took out, that's, that's all right, I think. Now they're going to do some more damage. Down goes another SCV. That's four for a Stalker. In comes the Phoenix. They're going to go uh, around and pick up a... a, a what? The SCV there, oh, and then man. try and take the medevac out. And then on the flip side, they're just going to start being annoying again. The Stalkers going in and harassing. They're going to take out another Marine for nothing. Out comes another Phoenix uh, to start doing some damage here. The Stalkers are just being an absolute nuisance. This Micro is cutting them to shreds. Without the Medevac, those Terran units are absolutely the squishiest things I've ever seen. Stalkers doing some e even some more damage. In come the Phoenixes. They're going to pick up a couple of these Marines yeah. and just take them out. Uh, immediately afterward. Now the SCVs in the natural are running for their lives. Up come a couple more pickups. The Marines are doing some damage. They're going to pick off two Phoenixes. Uh, the Zealots are coming in as well to help tank a little bit. The Stalkers are going to do some real damage. The SCVs are coming out. You know that when the SCVs are coming out uh, that you're going to have a bad game. Huck has not even used a ton of his resources. He's just sitting there pretty with a thousand of them as he starts to spend them now uh, to you know start like reinforcing his lines. Out comes a Marauder. One Marauder uh, not going to be enough all on its own. The Medevac is uh, going to help heal up these units, though, and that's going to be enough of that particular assault. The natural expansion is still alive, but at what cost? That was a hugely uh, valuable assault out of Huck, uh, and that's going to put him in. A, that's going to put him in the lead for now. Yeah, he's definitely kind of got the, a stranglehold here for a bit, although he's lost a lot of that uh, superior Phoenix fighting. And could he lose another here, potentially? It will get away it, it, with uh, very little health, but doesn't take that medevac down either. So as that healing starts to accumulate, just this small gateway count isn't, won't keep up, but a lot of damage has uh, been done and just a lot of delay has been done to uh, where Massa wants to be at this point in the game. Yeah, I think that Massa is going to end up on top of this if this keeps up. Oh, oh gets another SCV. It's going to end up going down. The Phoenix is going to back off after taking out that no another uh, resource-producing unit uh, of Massa's. But I think Massa kind of started doing really well at the end of that fight, and it was wise, I believe, of Huck to go ahead, back off, recoup his forces before uh, going in for reals. He's just got these Phoenixes going around and harassing for now and scouting. Unless if he's got another idea going on right now. Yeah, Mass is really trying to coax those into this. Oh, and it's going to end up taking out one of them. Yeah, but one is, yeah, one did the splash on it. Uh, a direct hit, I don't believe enough to take out a single Phoenix, but it takes it really red. So in this case, we've got two really red Phoenixes. Uh, the Phoenixes are still being a nuisance and taking yeah, stuff out. These Marines need to deal with it. Uh, and the Phoenixes are just going to back off after losing another two of their number. They managed to take out a number of SCVs along the way, but it hasn't been worth it, the uh, aggravation, really, do you yeah, think? It's, um, I mean, definitely this has kept Massa completely focused on defense, defense, defense. So any aggression that he was ever going to do isn't there. Um, the Phoenix being at a somewhat small number, I mentioned at the start of the game, Phoenix really help with Colossus because when the Vikings attempt to take them out, they distract and can go after those. But there's only like two left. So 
it's not as big of an issue here. Oh, uh, Dungle's Widow Mine is going to lift it, though. Yeah. Uh, it's going to get probably taken out, maybe? Uh, it, it takes a little yeah. more, but it will get taken down. And There's only a... one Phoenix can fire. So, oh, oh there, there they go. go. Yeah, there goes another Phoenix. Out comes the Sentry Shields. Uh, and the Zealots are trying to rush in, but they get picked off before they can even really reach yeah, the Terran they, lines. I think uh, the Force Field's working against them there a little bit. Yeah, just a, just yeah. a touch. Uh, there's a couple more Terran units uh, being dropped over here. The Protoss are going to warp in a couple off on their third expansion uh, to help defend it uh, from the attack that's obviously coming from the side. Out come the Marauders. Uh, they're going to do some damage to the pylon, but they are not going to be able to end it. Not yet. Uh, now Massa on the offensive. Uh, as he starts to try to put out some harassment, the Mothership Corps and a number of other things going to take out those units that were dropped in, that managed to wander in there. Um, right now, it feels as if Massa is coming at a bit of a standstill, and to force his hand right now might be uh, a bit of a tough order, particularly when uh, when Huck can actually see his entire army kind of massing there on the yeah. corner. And uh, I don't know if Massa's noticed that, doesn't want to blow a scan or what. No, he obviously hasn't noticed it, or he would not have picked up directly underneath it. Uh, this could be pretty dangerous. Oh, you no. Know, he will get away. They're going to do the yeah. full drop. They're going to get all of them down. They're going to lose a couple of uh, Terran units on the way out. But uh, overall, that could have been a lot worse. So quick yeah. reaction out of Massa. Now, if he can grab, actually grab a surround here uh, on this force, although he's bringing the bulk of it back down, the Colossus does fall there. Uh, Bio trying to run away into these Widow Mines, which do some pretty good hits against uh, the Zealots there. At the bottom part of the map, uh, Force is fighting. If they can clean out the Zealot front, uh, they will do quite well. And now against uh, Stalkers, Marauders are pretty much king. Yeah, they're but, doing uh, a ton of damage. Yeah. yeah, the Stalkers have to run. There's yeah. no way that they can take the last couple of Marauders with the Medivac support. Uh, even with a couple of Zealots being warped in right now, the, there is a slight advantage going for Huck in terms of the small bottom engage. Uh, now it's a much larger advantage considering the rest of the Protoss forces have made their way down. So that's going to be the end of Massa's offensive for now. He's going to go back and recoup. What do you do right now if you are Massa? You've noticed that he's got Colossi. Uh, you, I you've noticed at least one Immortal. Uh, in all of that as well. So you know that he's going for that mechanical Protoss uh, kind of army. What does Massa have to do to kind of wrest control of this right now? I think he's going to be best served if he can get enough. Uh, he's lost a few medivacs, but if he can get that count out, which looks pretty decent right now, and then eventually get a few Vikings as well. He's got the upgrade advantage uh, as these do poke in. Uh, force fields here this time quite effective, but uh, will keep the Zealots out against the second wave of forces. And uh, things is coming in the back. Yeah, things looking actually pretty decent for the Terran units. Yeah. They managed to pick up a bunch of Zealots for free. Uh, now the damage comes out. Lots of pain being dished to these Terrans as the Colossi finally get their hands on them. And a ton of Zealots are warped in from the sneaky pylon being lifted yeah. on the cliff there. And uh, this fight has gone completely uh, haywire as the Colossi finally moves back upstairs. The Terrans actually come out on top of that particular yeah. engagement. And he's going to try and chase down this Colossus with the uh, boost on the medevac. Will drop Marauders down. If he can take that out, and he does, uh, that that is a huge pickup there. Yeah, that pylon almost swung the fight in Protoss' favor, but uh, not quite able to do so. And uh, largely actually because of the upgrade advantage that Massa has. Right at the beginning of that fight, plus two. Uh, finished, and his opponent, I believe, is still only at... Uh, Building his ones, yeah. by the look of things. Yeah. But so, yeah, Huck yeah, right now only is, a one -one, so. yeah, Huck is uh, in a sticky position then right now because Massa's got a massive uh, unit advantage over him right now. I mean, Colossi can swing that, but the Colossi are weak to all these Marauders. Another Zealot goes down. Another Zealot loses all of his shields. we got a couple people oh. being warped in. The one Colossi in the base gets picked off, unfortunately, for Huck. Uh, and now Huck going to try to see if he can't flank. The Colossi going to take out some Widow Mines that were dropped along the back. These Terrans are doing a huge number. They're going to take out that Nexus and then fly in the sky. These Medvacs are going to drop right on top of the Colossi and then pick them right back up. Well, we're not going to drop in that. And down goes one of the Medivacs. Um, but uh, I don't think there was anything inside of it. So not a huge loss for the Terran forces. And now the Vikings are out and about. These Colossi have a lot to be afraid of and very real little defenses to protect them. Yeah, there's... There's not a lot. I mean, the natural's gone down, 
so uh, can't float out over Chidge there anymore as he's trying to rebuild it. Uh, yeah, the Colossus don't have a ton of meat in front of them. Sentry count has been constantly reset, so that's not as big a deal. Uh, one Viking it does fall, but he'll just uh, kind of kite back and keep trying to reset the Zealot numbers until he can get on top of the Colossus. Well, all, like all this resetting of the Zealot numbers is actually yeah. doing a severe number on Hux resources. Yeah. Each one of those, you know, it's 100 minerals, and but over time, that stacks up. And uh, Mass is doing a really good job of taking them out every time. He's not losing too many Marines and Rodders in the, on the, you know, in the exchange. He's got a ton of Medivacs still very much alive. Yeah, oh, he, uh, he does. Uh, he's also almost about to finish plus three attack, uh, which will be <laughs> quite large uh, against this. Now that's going to really hurt. Oh, that guy got absolutely fried as well. Uh, Kentucky Fried Terran, not exactly my favorite restaurant to eat at. I wouldn't recommend it. Tastes awful. But uh, Protoss, obviously a fan who can tell, you know, what's up with alien taste. Right now these medevacs are moving around the top end. I'm not sure if he's, Huck knows this. Yeah, I, I don't think he does, and I think he's planning to drop. I don't know what he's doing, actually. He, I think he was thinking of dropping uh, just down there and killing off, like, the Robo and maybe the Nexus again. But, but instead, they're going to come from behind, and, yeah. and that's going to be a bunch of dead Zealots. One of the Colossi gets picked off as well, so another great pickoff for Massa as he starts to really come in with the power of these Marauders. But the Marauders are now getting somewhat uh, surrounded, and the Colossi uh, are doing some decent damage. So they're going to have to like get some heals first, back off, force the Protoss off for a minute. And now that they're relatively well healed and stim-packed, they're going to come right back in and tear these Colossi a new one. Uh, one goes down, a bunch of turrets goes down as well. A bunch of units warm again for Huck. He's doing his best. Down goes his Colossus, though. And these Marauders still very much alive. Uh, with a Viking or two to go ahead and back them up. Now we got some stalkers moving to the side, but it's just, it's too much. It's too much. And Mass is going to take his game two yeah. uh, in this game three. Now Very I evenly matched. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, H Huck's last message there was like, GGGGD, grats. I don't know whether he thinks that was a best of three or, <laughs> or uh, It is not. It is not. It is, not. It is that, in yeah. fact, a best of five. So there's Masters got up and they're shaking hands. And Massa goes sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Massa, Massa sit. Go sit. Unless, unless, unless if, it uh, is a best of three and somebody's changed it, but it it's not. Be. It's no. most definitely not. So unless if somebody decided, unless if Huck decided, you know what, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm tired for the night. I'm going to forfeit. Uh, this is a best of five. So all things considered, it is two to one in the series. Massa looking really good, but uh, you know yeah. that that game. Let's talk about that game for right now. Yeah. Um, that was really evenly matched. There was a yeah. lot of back and forth pull and you know push and pull. Uh, I haven't seen a game of StarCraft II like that in a little while. What do you think ended up being the deciding factor in all that? Because there wasn't a like sudden eureka yeah. moment. It just kind of seemed to be a progressive gain of ground. I think it was um, like Hawk went for something that was meant to be dominant and suppress Massa from ever getting air units out, ever really getting control. But at the end of that whole sequence, it was actually Massa that had a worker lead. Yeah, because so much went into doing that. Like it's it's such an investment to make those Phoenix, such an investment to kind of commit a lot of st stalkers are expensive, Phoenix are expensive, and that they don't they're not as good against Marauder Marine once those get yeah. up. But the idea was to prevent them from ever getting up, and that's that didn't not, happen. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I mean happen. that did yeah. happen. You know what I mean. Yeah. The Marauders managed to make their okay. way out. All right. Apparently, we have changed to a best of three. I don't know why. Well, so there you have it, So then. that's it. Massa has won. <laughs> <laughs> so Massa's going to be your champion for tonight. Yeah, congratulations. Right. That was a very well-played yeah. final game, Ben. If mm. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, that was unfortunate. Like, again, um, it's a little unfortunate that yeah. it's not a best of five, because I would have loved to yeah. see more of these yeah, two players. Yeah, that was so evenly matched between the two. And yeah, that, that last one could have easily gone either way. I think even mm. if... Uh, what? I don't know what this means. Maybe we're not. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I, well, guess, I guess it's done. Yeah, it's, it, what's done otherwise. is done. Yeah. It was a best of three, and I'm sorry for that, folks. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, we were like, it's a best of three now all of a sudden, so you don't get to see more of it. But okay. uh, things all considered, um, that was a great grand finals. Yeah. Congratulations to Massa. Congratulations to Huck and to everybody else that participated yeah. in the Torcraft tournament. Uh, housed by AMD Radeon's Extravaganza here tonight. Uh, my name's been Slow Wolf, uh, and I've been I joined here by. Yeah, and again, another shout out to Oddly Studios for helping to donate to the. How big was this prize pool again? Uh, 1,500. 
I, I'm never good with numbers. I'm a musician. I count up to four. It's about as tall as it gets. But $1,500, that's, that's a really good prize pool. And now Massa walking out of this building tonight with a fairly large chunk of it. Yeah. Anyway. And a lot of pride. And a lot of, you know, that is last a lot of pride. Time, last time he lost to Huck, so. Well, good. wow. So, yeah. so, you know, this is kind of a Cinderella story in yeah. a sense then. That's actually really cool. Yeah. So, again, one last time. Uh, my name's been Slow Wolf. You can actually uh, find us in a bunch of different places, I believe. Yeah. Uh, where can everyone find uh, you? You can find me on, I, I cast the ASL a lot. I also think that, uh, speaking of Cinderella stories, Steadfast looks the most like a Disney princess. And uh, <laughs> he's yeah, yeah, so find he's me on. I can tell right now he's a delicate man. <laughs> yeah, find me on ASL or casting these tour crafts a lot and uh, Ender Sword on Twitter. All right, and uh, you guys can go ahead and uh, find me uh, on Twitter as well at Slow Wolf. I also have a YouTube channel where I do a bunch of different games, uh, mostly MOBAs, uh, and one in particular called Awesome Nuts. It's a, it's a oh, tiny, okay. it's a, it's yeah, a smaller yeah. MOBA by far, but yeah. um, you know, I've got my own videos there and I do my own thing. But you can nice. find me on uh, Twitter and on and, uh, on YouTube. With that said and done, thank you everybody so much for watching. We hope that you all enjoyed yourselves. We definitely did. Thank you. That that was a much better point. That was that was good. Uh, thank you so much for <laughs> casting with me. Yep. Uh, this was a this was a great Fun. couple of games to cast. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see you at the AMD. Uh, we'll see you at the next Torcraft tournament and the next uh, Starcraft tournament that AS Champ ends up putting together. Yep. Everybody at home, you have a good night. <laughs>